now. Alrighty, hello and welcome to the IPFS All Hands Call. It's March the 30th. Uh, it's a beautiful, no it's not, it's cloudy outside, uh, but we're gonna persist anyway. Today is lightning talk day, uh, which means, if you've never heard of lightning talks before, where, where have you been? Lightning talks about the best talks ever because you get a small little snippet of information, usually fired at you quite rapidly, over the duration of five minutes, just five, five minutes. So uh, you guys who are presenting today, um, I'll give you a, a warning in the chat after four minutes or so. And then after five minutes, I will kick you out of the room. No, not really. <laughs> I'll probably just say, hey, it's been five minutes. You should probably think about stalling now. Um, so, okay, today at the moment we have, we're gonna try and get through uh, Carson, uh, who's gonna talk about chair spreads. We've got Matt talking about pinata news. Uh, Dietrich's going to talk to us about F Denver, um, and uh, I'm going to talk to you some about something called the IPFS Browser Sandbox, uh, if we have time. Um, if anyone else has a lightning talk that they'd like to give, please add it to the list. If we don't get it today, get to it today, then we, we do lightning talks every few weeks or so, so we can add you to that slot instead, so uh, no, no worries on there. Um, Cool. Um, would uh, this is always fun? Um, I got permission to do recording. Would someone like to take notes today? Come on, put a hand up, someone. I'll write your name in the note taker slot. I say you just pick a face. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I These are tough times, man. <laughs> I pick uh, Lytle's face. <laughs> You're the note taker, thank you. All right, sweet. Um, okay, without further ado, because I know I'm just talking rubbish, uh, let's go on. And if it's okay with you, Carson, would you like to go first and do your five minute lightning talk? Uh, sure, yep. Take it Am away, I... thank you. All right, let me just, I'm going to share my screen because I do have a couple of. Um, but I'm getting a bunch of Slack messages from the team saying, good luck on your talk. So uh, I'm just going to mute them for a second here. Okay. Okay, how does that look? Everybody see that? Big pink letters. Okay, hi. Thanks uh, everybody for having me here. It's been a while since I was at one of these um, community uh, calls and I think I should probably start doing that again um, but anyway thanks for having me I just wanted to talk really quickly about uh, something that we have just sort of silently released called JS threads um, JS threads is a protocol and event sourced database for decentralized user silo data it's our JavaScript implementation of a uh, project that we have been working on for a while now uh, so some quick background on that um, some of you might remember Textile, we released something called Photos, and Photos was backed by um, essentially a protocol for exchanging updates between a set of peers. And we learned a lot um, in that experiment, and we literally went back to the drawing board, wrote a white paper. This is it right here. You can check it out at that uh, short link there. Um, went right back to the drawing board and started from scratch. And um, we started building this protocol and event source database uh, on top of IPFS and libp2p and IPLD and all of the great uh, projects that uh, fall under the banner of IPFS. And our first implementation was our reference implementation, which is in Go. Second implementation, which we just sort of stealthily released is TypeScript, fully typed uh, TypeScript. And I'm really, really excited about it. Uh, for a bunch of reasons. Um, so I'm just gonna give you a high level overview of what is Threads, and then um, hopefully that will tickle your fancy enough to go check it out on GitHub, et cetera. So Threads, roughly speaking, is a document store and a data store compliant key value store. Um, it has a MongoDB-like interface, so it just feels like you're working with a local database. Uh, it embraces offline first and remote sync uh, from the get-go, so if you add something to the database and you're not connected to any other peers, it'll feel like you've just added something to a database and the next time you actually have a 
a connection, it will fire that stuff off um, in the background. Uh, Textiles developed user and developer authentication, so you can actually do authenticated database stuff on a cloud um, if you want. Uh, or you can run it locally, or you can run your own instance um, to keep it fully decentralized. Uh, you have multiple transport options. So it does PubSub, it does direct peer-to-peer, -peer, it does uh, pretty much any form of transport you can think of that libp2p supports, which means that you've got a bunch of different options for how your data actually gets to connected peers. Um, even IPLD soon, actually. Um, it has cryptographic uh, key-based access control, and that's pretty nuanced access control. So you can have things like readers and writers and followers and all this good stuff. Um, and all that stuff is backed by sort of best-in-class encryption and wrapped up in nice IPLD objects so that you can pass them along um, and your users will know how to read it. I don't see the chat, so if I need to stop, uh, maybe just someone wave their hands vigorously like this. Um, and uh, we'll hopefully see that. Uh, we also have configurable codecs. So if you have a very specific use case where you need like a CRDT to make sure that um, your peers are always uh, going to be able to resolve any conflicts, then you can plug in custom CRDTs. Um, by default, we have a, a couple simple ones, um, including um, some operational um, uh, transport ones. So you can do things like, uh, you know, JSON put events and stuff like that, and all the peers will receive the same types of events in the same order. Um, you can do uh, like text-based uh, uh, handling and all sorts of other pluggable uh, codecs. So that stuff's all good to go and uh, I'd love for people to start playing with it. Um, here's stuff that I'm working on right now that we will get released over the next few sprints. Um, this sprint I'm actually focused on documentation, so don't judge me if you go there today. Judge me when you go there next week. Um, but uh, we'll have PubSub only transport coming up soon for people who want really lightweight um, decentralized MongoDB database. Um, we'll be adding indexing, which that code's already ready to go, it just hasn't been merged. Um, a bunch of minimal config pinning setups. Uh, so Textile can pin your stuff. You can use Pinata to pin your stuff. You can uh, ask your friend to pin your stuff, whatever you want. Um, and very soon we're gonna have a bunch of large data options uh, so that you can actually put large data in your um, uh, document stores. So there you go. Um, uh, I think I'm out of time. So come build stuff with us. Go check out textile.io uh, js-threads on GitHub. Uh, and then you can check out our reference implementation. And it's all backed by a white paper that is rendered in LaTeX so you know it's science-y. Thanks very much. Awesome, thank you. Woo! Yeah, nice. Uh, uh, we could probably do one quick question. Yeah, cool. We got, looks like I have one minute. Uh, if no questions, the one slide I did skip, uh, which was the one that said network of trustless peers. So one feature we added to threads that we learned about uh, in our first iteration was, um, by having sort of a hierarchy of keys, you can actually um, give out a service key to say a service provider and they can back up the data um, without actually knowing what the contents of that data looks like. So you get this uh, pretty cool situation where you can actually have a like third party backing up your database without knowing what your database is full of. Um, so that's a pretty nice feature. Awesome. Cool, thank you. All right, uh, so if any, anyone else, oh, hang on. Uh, would it be inter possible to integrate with OrbitDB, says Andrew? Yeah, good question. Um, we've been thinking about this a bunch. So ultimately it's, it's like a alternative to OrbitDB. It does a bunch of things that OrbitDB doesn't and OrbitDB has things that it doesn't do. Um, but I think given that we do also support PubSub, you could, also intercept PubSub messages that were intended for an OrbitDB instance and um, write a codec to handle those. So the answer I think is is a is a pretty positive yes. Thanks. All right. Uh, cool. Next up, uh, we have uh, Matt uh, with Pinata regions and re replications. <laughs> ah, sorry. Did I spell that right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Go. Yeah. go for it. Cool. Uh, let me, let's share here real quick. Uh, 
hit share. Awesome. No, 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 no. Hold on. Um, did you guys see Slacker? Did you see, did you see Slacker? Did you see Pinata there? I saw Pinata. Okay, okay. Sorry, I panicked. My bad. <laughs> All right. I only saw your bank account numbers and passwords. No all right, all right. I was sorry, Zoom freaked me out here for a second. All right. In this day and age, Zoom still scares me. All right. <clears throat> Here's what we got. All right. So um, a few weeks ago, uh, this has been a project we've been working on for quite a while. Um, early on, we were looking for more ways to horizontally scale out Pinata more. And a lot of our users had been asking for more of uh, – Options for speed, redundancy, um, you know, how do I get my content in multiple parts of the world? How do I manage all of that? And uh, so this has been many months in the making, but this is what we call regions and replications. Um, so basically what this allows you to do is pin your content multiple times in multiple regions. Um, the simple way to do it, this is on the test server, by the way, so any account information is fake. Um, will be so no don't try and uh, scam our main servers um but it comes down to this thing we call a pin policy and uh right now we are letting users pin content in uh, both germany and then new york city so this is kind of what your account settings will be by default and uh, you can say hey i want it pinned once in frankfurt and once in new york city or i can set it up to twice in New York City is maybe I have a lot more users there that are fetching data. Um, so you can set that as your default account level one. Uh, you can also send in uh, a custom pin policy for you know, uh, a unique upload via the API if you want to as well. Um, so let's say like we want to upload a, uh, a file here. We'll send it up there and then you'll notice here it kind of it'll take you can look at your pin list and say hey um, now this is where we want it to be, and here's the process of it. And right now we said, okay, the first place it went to is New York City. That's because I'm from the United States and our servers are kind of all latency balanced right now, that part of the new update. So it'll go to the server that's closest to you and it'll send it to the region that's closest to you if you've uh, decided to pin it there. But if we update it, we should notice that it replicated all behind the scenes using BitSwap and all the fun stuff. Uh, we have all these multi uh, microservice things going on. But yeah, that's, um, let's say we changed our minds. Now we want it zero times in New York City. It turns out nobody lives there. Um, we can do that. And now it's only in Frankfurt. Uh, it's been deleted off the New York City servers. Um, so that's the quick, quick and dirty. I realize that probably only took a few, a few seconds or minutes, but uh, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to, to answer them. Nice. That's very cool. I, I have a quick question. Uh, yeah. W when you say two, two in New York City, d does mm -hmm. that mean like two IPFS nodes that are running in New York? Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 So, um, so we have uh, like all of our, all of our data by default, you know, is, is uh, erasure coded, like multi server racks set up. So the data is not going to die. Um, but we wanted to give people the ability to say, okay, I want multiple nodes announcing this content uh, in specific regions. Um, so it kind of gives you the ability to fine tune your CDN, if you will. Um, so each, each replication is gonna be you know, a node. So this one would have three different nodes, one in New York City and then two in Frankfurt announcing the content. And then if people want to as well, um, we can also set up uh, custom regions for them. So then, and then give their accounts permission to it. So let's say that you're from uh, India. We could set up one kind of in Eastern Asia or like Bangladesh. And um, the, you know, that would give your account access to that. And then you would have that as an, an option to replicate your content in as well. To kind of choose where, uh, where things are going on a more fine tuned basis. Nice. Uh, and yeah. yeah, so Andrew was asking, is there any plans for other regions other than France and New York? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, so you just um, said wherever you want, basically. So. Yeah, yeah, it's basically wherever you want. And uh, the cool thing what we can do with this now is we can do private networking if you want. Um, we can do cross clouds. So let's say you want one in GCP, uh, you want one in Azure, AWS, DigitalOcean. You can run, you know, four different cloud providers if you want, and we could set that up for you so that your data is pretty much never going to be taken offline. Um, so a lot of flexibility there. Really cool. Seems very simple and on the front end, but uh, we've kind of basically recreated our own version of IPFS cluster. Uh, I talked with Hector a lot on this and learned a lot of cool things from him. Nice. So major props to Hector if he's on this call. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. of course. Uh, Hector being the cluster lead, or has been for Yes, us. yes, yes. Uh, very, very smart man. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> Cool. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Matt. That was awesome. Um, that's really cool. Good news and fun times. Uh, if you'd like to stop sharing. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so next up, we have Dietrich, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about Air Eve Denver. Hi, everybody. A face. Uh, Heard something from someone about someone who looks familiar. I bet. So I, what seems like several years ago in a planet far, far away, uh, there was actually a very large Ethereum developers conference in uh, Colorado, in Denver. Uh, before that conference, however, was a pretty amazing event called the Decentralized Network Summit. This was basically a IP and, IPFS and friends and interested parties day. A bunch of people were building stuff on top of IPFS, doing talks about decentralized networks, using it, building IPFS, and kind of showing off to the community there that was there for the conference, uh, who were specifically interested in, in the decentralized and distributed networks aspect of, of this overall Web3 stack, um, be able to dive deeper, a place where they can talk about challenges for building, uh, for shipping products, on top of it. A lot of the people here on this meeting joined us for this special event, and you might see some familiar faces who just talked to you moments ago. Uh, but there's between 40 and 80 people at different points in time during the day preceding the ETH Denver event, and it was fantastic to be able to get a bunch of quality time with uh, some of our favorite projects and folks. Uh, the, uh, this is a picture of the event, and that, uh, that, that dude off to the left or right, depending on how you're looking at this, is Dan Shields, who was uh, a deserve special thanks as a, a massive mover and shaker, somebody who got this community together in a really important way for a really special event. Very cool, thank you. Uh, the main event was the next few days, ETH Denver, F Denver, however you, if you're from the UK, however you prefer to pronounce it. This is over 2,000 people building things on top of the uh, Ethereum stack. Uh, a lot of people using IPFS. Uh, it, we had a table there with uh, the IPFS open source project represented well by folks from Pinata Textile, Three Box, and a bunch of other projects. People hanging out for a few days, ask, answering questions. Hundreds and hundreds of people coming by this table, and it was very interesting to see the uh, division of of people's reaction. Half the people there seemed like had been to Ethereum events before, like, ah, oh, these conferences are always the same people over and over. Uh, but we love you. Thank you so much, IPFS. Build, everyone's building on top of you. And the other half are people who pretty much never really been to one of these types of events before. I walked up to the table and said, what? what's IPFS? Can you tell me more about IPFS? So it's very, very interesting to see new people coming into the space and then people, very you know, mature people build, building mature, more mature solutions on top of this still nascent early, early times in the stack. Um, and, and really a lot of support from, from the folks that are building on top of IPFS. Uh, uh, you can see the Bufficorn, the official uh, mascot of the of Denver event um, in full furry glory there. It was a really, really amazing venue as well, the Sports Castle, if you ever get a chance to go there. Very nice place. There was a hackathon, main event of the uh, at Denver conference. And one of, the, one of the most important and really just fantastic parts for our community is that basically about half of the people who participated used IPFS either directly or indirectly through things like Three Box Textile and Yada. Uh, and th this really shows the importance of our attention and care and presence in the Ethereum community and just how effective we're doing it. Uh, we're, we're being at meeting their needs. 
So um, thanks really a lot to, to Pinata and, and Textile and all the other folks who, who showed up and invested their time and uh, their effort and conversations with all these random folks and um, people who are already part of the community in, in supporting them and, and building their Web3 on top of Web3 solutions and applications on top of IPFS. That's it. Thanks. Nice. Thank you, Dietrich. That was bang on time. Does anyone have any quick questions for Dietrich? Please shout out. Yeah, Dietrich, are there any plans for like a decentralized COVID-19, as everyone stay at home sort of conference coming up this year, for, especially for East Denver? Uh, th that's a good question. We actually did get a poke from one of the folks in the uh, Brave community who is organizing an event just like that. I mean, basically, uh, I think uh, several days of trainings, workshops, and talks uh, around uh, distributed networking. So not specific to Ethereum, this one. Uh, I'm not sure about in the Ethereum community, there might be more events like that. Uh, but we'll uh, definitely be sharing news about the one being organized around uh, decentralized networks, for sure. And I think so far that's including people from IPFS, folks from uh, DAT community, uh, Scuttlebot community, so a bunch of folks in the web space. If anyone watching or listening uh, or here right now has links to other events, definitely share them in the chat uh, or reply on, on Twitter or comment on YouTube when this is po posted there. Nice, cool, thank you uh, again. Um, okay, uh, we'll, let's quickly move on because um, it's it, I'm hosting, so I'm gonna play as well. <laughs> uh, so I've got a quick lightning talk. Um, uh, in the last five minutes that we have here. So let's do that quickly. Uh, this is, wait, wait a minute. Um, how to share the screen? <laughs> uh, let's just share that. Okay, here we go. Okay, do you see my screen? Or do you see a screen? Yes. <laughs> yep, sweet. Yes, we do. Cool. All right. Uh, okay, here's my slides. That's, it's a slide. Um, hang on, let me just bring up my notes. Okay, here we are, IPFS browser, sandbox. Woohoo! Uh, what is this? Okay, well, it's a browser you can use to surf the internet. <laughs> Wait. Okay, no biggie so far, but imagine if you could surf in space. <laughs> uh, well, you can now. This is the interplanetary file system browser and it's a peer-to-peer -peer web browser. Uh, it's kind of like a uh, Beaker browser, if you've heard of that, but for IPFS, if you've not heard of Beaker browser, you should check it out. Beaker browser is a, um, a, a browser that works with DAT um, and it's doing a similar sort of thing. Right, I mean, obviously it came first. <laughs> anyway, um, so you can think of this as kind of a technology preview of what's possible when uh, P2P is supported natively in the browser. Um, and so just caveat here, it's not been vetted or proven to be secure in any way at all. Um, and it obviously doesn't have uh, a lot of the polish or features that you see in like Chrome or Firefox, um, partly because it's about two days old, um, but, the most important point is that there's no limits. There's no limits at all. Um, so we can demonstrate and experiment without having to work around the same restrictions that we have when we're trying to like extend existing browsers like Chrome or Firefox or, or IE or whatever. Um, so if we wanna use IPFS paths instead of URLs, then we can. Hooray! Uh, if we want to consider IPFS resources in the secure context, then we can. Hooray! Uh, and if we want to, if we want our web extensions to have access to low-level TCP, UDP, or MDNS APIs, then we can. Um, we can also allow every website that that we visit to have access to our IPFS node that's running in the browser. Hooray! So anyway, you get the picture. All right, enough talking. So what is this? This is so like I've, I'm my chat ah, my slides are actually showing in this browser that I'm talking about, uh, which is super cool. Uh, it's, it's got tabs um, and the, not, there's not a lot of stuff here basically, but you can do, you know, uh, you can navigate to things like you do in a normal browser because it's a browser, you know what to do. Um, but you can also look at 
uh, IPFS resources. So I've got a, uh, a CID here, which I can just paste paste in here, and uh, and hopefully, hooray! Wow, it's our favourite image. <laughs> okay, it's Lido's favourite image. I'm also kind of partial to it. I've grown to love it now. Um, but like you, look, you can uh, look at IPFS resources like this cute little um, Guardian thing. Uh, which is also slightly freaky, but look, it's an IPFS, it's an IPFS path we've just navigated to, so that's cool. Um, but, you, but what's also kind of way better is if the IPFS resources are actually like uh, web pages. So you can like look at the IPFS blog like that uh, and like we're navigating around IPFS resources in the browser. <laughs> Hooray! Uh, so that's, that's pretty awesome, huh? Completely natively. Um, so you can even do like uh, CBOR encoded data. So uh, let's let's try something out. So, uh, so I've got my command line here, and I, I should just be able to do. Uh, oh, hang on! I need some quotes. I need more qu quotes, more quotes than than I had before. Pipe that into IPFS. Tag put. There we go. Put that there. Uh, here we go. And then I should just be able to paste this into here. Hey, and it comes up. Hooray, that's great. Uh, but like what's even more interesting is if I do something like, uh, uh, ooh, okay, bear with me here. Uh, so if I have like a link to some, to that, that thing, uh, I can do something like this, uh, slash, uh, 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 it, here we go, here we go. Hang on, I'm gonna put some regular data in there as well. Uh, like just some data. Maybe that's well formed. We'll see. <laughs> Put it in IPFS. Hooray! We got a new CID. Let's have a look at that one now. <laughs> uh, so I should be able to pair. Let's, let's do it in a different tab than that. Doesn't matter. Put it in. Hey, there's our data. Uh, and it's got a link in it. Um, which obviously I can I can just you know look at that data like like that, uh, but if I just put in slash link here, I should also be able to access it through the magic of IPLD and linking, uh, and I should also be able to go data. So just get the data out. Um, so hooray for that! That is the uh, IPFS browser sandbox. Uh, for experimentation and fun times and the possibilities of what you could do in a P2P browser. Um, and that's about all I have to say. Woo! Let's stop the share. <laughs> okay. Uh, any quick questions? We're over time now. I'm sorry it took a little while. That's wildly so, fast when you have so obviously the local resources. So you're browsing IPLD objects though, but actually like you had an IPFS slash. So is that correct syntax? Maybe not, but it's all IPFS supports right now. <laughs> okay, way cool. <laughs> uh, how, how easy is it gonna be to keep pulling upstream and keeping that updated? Uh, so it's, it's just Electron under the hood. So if I can keep Electron up to date, then that they're doing that for me, uh, basically. Uh, whatever gets broken or changed by the by Chrome um, is kind of up for grabs. But like the Electron API is meant to be reasonably stable, so uh, hopefully not too much. Like the, I must stress that you know building your own browser is not like something you just pick up like, over a weekend. And like I, I realize the gravity of like just doing that, but it's not, it's not so much that IPFS or or I have the time or ability to create a browser and for it to be used by millions and millions of people. But it's more like, this is what could, this is what the future could be like in browsers. Uh, and let's, let's experiment and, and see what we can do uh, 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 using something like this and then see, be able to show the browser implementation, implementers this sort of thing and, and like, you know, make it happen in the future. Any other quick questions? We are over time now. So if you need to go, you can, you're welcome to go. All right. Um, 
if there's no more questions, then thank you very much, uh, everyone, for coming. It's been it's been really fun, uh, and I uh, obviously enjoyed it lots. <laughs> uh, Lido, uh, thank you for taking notes, and we will uh, see you next. Uh, well, next week for a new for a new IPFS weekly call. Uh, it won't be lightning talks, but we'll do lightning talks again soon. Uh, but thank you again for coming, and um, have a nice uh, rest of your day. All right, bye everyone. Thanks, Alan. You're bye. welcome.